All right, so what I need to do is I need to test to see if um, the Bruce relief valve is actually opening where I want it to open. For my application, I would like it to open at full, not interested in the high boost pressures. It's attached to an air tank, and there's only a couple of pounds in there so that I, I don't risk damage anything. And then it's attached to a uh, 30 PSI fuel pressure gauge. And I'm going to add air slowly until I just get this to move. And then I'm going to find out how much air pressure it takes to push it all the way out. And then I want to find out at what pressure does she close all the way back up. Okay, so it is opening a little sooner than I actually figured it was. I figured it wasn't even going to start until 6, and then wouldn't be fully open until it was above 10. When in actuality, it appears to be starting at about 3.5, but it's still a little much for what I'd like it to do. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it open and see if I can get a little lighter spring in there. Okay, as you can see, I am just carefully, and I'm just doing it by hand, uh, hacksawing a nice even ring all around the bottom so that I can separate the two halves. And then with luck, find a softer spring. Okay, there it is, the inside of the canister. So this is the spring I've got to work with. A couple of choices I could do. I could just simply shorten it, which I'm, I'm kind of considering. Um, not really going to change the spring rate all that much. And that's the rubber diaphragm. Yeah. Remember if you cut this apart you have got to put it in your solvent tank and get all those little metal filings out. Yeah, you probably won't get all of them out but get as many as you possibly can because I'm sure that's not good for it. Okay Here's what I've done. This is all cleaned up now. I still need to... A little emery paper on that. I didn't have a softer spring, at least in my piles of junk. So rather than cut it off, what I decided to do was anneal it a little bit. And that does two things. Number one, it, it does soften the spring rate. But because it doesn't recover as far, it also shortens the spring. And it kicked it a little crooked. But and it's in the canister, it'll be held straight. I think that'll be fine. So it appears to be quite, quite a bit more friendly towards what I'm trying to do. So I'm going to go ahead and put it back together, and I'm just going to tack weld. And then what I've done is uh, mark these. Don't forget to do that so that I can get them back where they belong. I'm going to go ahead and tack weld it back together, give it a chance to cool, and then test it again. And if I like what I see, then I'll, I'll weld it the rest of the way. Okay, so I have it lined back up again with my marks, and I'm going to go ahead and weld her. Just a small tacks because I don't want to burn that diaphragm. Okay, so we'll give that a moment to cool. And I'll rotate it around on the vise. Yeah. Nice thing about winter nights. it. Uh, cools fast. second one. Alright, let's see what she does. Oh, much better. Yeah, 
So now it's fully actuated by 7 psi. Pulling back in. And we start to actuate at 2. So it dropped a pound and a half. This is all just seat of the pants as far as I'm concerned. And if, obviously if you're after something technical, then you probably shouldn't be cutting this apart and welding it back together. That's really in the ballpark. So we went from being fully actuated at 9 psi to being fully actuated at 6, 6.5. And, and we went from starting at 3.5, 4 to starting at 2, 2.5. Two so those are the numbers that I'm really looking for. And then once again, I, if you want some higher boost numbers, obviously this could be done in reverse. You could take it apart and add something, but that would make me nervous. Making it lighter, you're not going to blow it up. It's going to be harder to blow up. Making it heavier, well now you're taking your motor's life into your own hands. And I'm certainly not going to be responsible for that. Nothing serious, just a series of spot welds. Wait until you can touch it before you move on to the next one. Otherwise, you're gonna burn a hole in that rubber diaphragm, making everything you just did completely pointless. Okay, if I'm honest, normally I wouldn't fess up to this. I would uh, find a way to hide the fact that I just blew a hole in it. And I'm pretty sure if I try to chase that, I'll wreck the diaphragm. However, when I started the Jeep project, on the blog, I promised that I would put it all there, including the times that I screwed up and broke something. So, I screwed up and broke something. It'll still work. What I'm contemplating doing, continuing to tack it. I guess at this point there's no reason for a full bead. Maybe I'll just uh, do a few more tacks, grind them down smooth, and I'm thinking a little bit of silicone and electrical tape. Because... Well, hell, that's all it holds the Jeep together anyways, and it seems to work fine, so... Yeah, I don't know, I'm still thinking about it. And we're done! So, I went with the RTV Blue and the electrical tape route. So, RTV Blue all the way around the rim, and then the electrical tape. You know, I'm not really sure how super important it is. Obviously, uh, dirt can get in through there. It's really a dust baffle. It'll be fine. It'll be just fine. So.